watching me or be listening to me from wherever you are hearing me or listening to me from just want to welcome you to this a special program of um, journeying to the cross with jesus christ during this season of lent on day one of lent in the christian calendar today's ash wednesday uh, the day that marks the beginning of the lent season this season whereby christians journey with jesus christ to the cross journey with jesus christ to the victory because that life of jesus christ didn't end on the cross it went past the grave to easter so we are journeying to the cross we're journeying beyond the cross to the christian victory that easter is all about and so on this day one of our journey to the cross i'd like us to meditate from uh, matthew chapter 6 the verses 16 to 21 matthew chapter 6 the verses 16 to 21 and i'm reading from the new international version of the bible when you fast do not look somber as the hypocrites do for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting truly i tell you they have received their reward in full but when you fast put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also dear friends jesus addresses two very crucial things in this text first he talks about fasting he talks about fasting i'm not going to dwell so much on fasting because i'll be doing that in the days ahead but jesus says when you fast and when he talks about fasting here if you read at the beginning of chapter 6 of matthew you will discover that earlier he talked about when you give and then later on he talked about when you pray then he comes to when you fast so when you look at what he says about the two previous subjects and what he eventually says in when you fast you will discover that all that he's trying to say is that we should not perform our religious duties with the desire to impress other people. That should never be the intention of any religious duty because once religious duty becomes that which we do in order to impress, which we do in order to seek for notice, which we do in order to call attention to the fact that we are doing these things for God, then the power of that spiritual activity is immediately lost it is lost the purpose is defeated so jesus says when you fast do not give any form of appearance that can sell it out to those who are watching you that you are fasting it's not like they should never know that you're fasting but you should not be the one to announce it either by going about telling people i am fasting as if to to, to mean that by so doing you're now becoming a super spiritual person or by selling yourself out either by i mean by way of not talking but you know by the way you look so that when people see you they see a disfigured human being they see somebody who is so unkempt and then when they ask say no i am fasting so jesus says do not do that because when you do that you will be doing that to impress human beings no you are not fasting for the human beings you're not fasting so that others should see you're not fasting so that other christians should see how spiritual you are you are fasting because you desire to be with your god and this god sees even the things that human beings cannot see when you do your works so as to please god even if human beings don't notice god who notices will reward you that is what jesus is telling his disciples and by extension us yes dear friends i know we are heading into the season of lent the season of fasting the season of being somebody season of intensifying our walk with god 
Why do you do the things you do? Why will you be doing the things you do? Will you be doing them to seek for attention? Will you be doing them to let people see how much you can do for God? If that is ever the reason you're doing any of those things, then the purpose is defeated even before you would have begun. Jesus says, do it. And if it is possible, let only God see and know that you are doing the spiritual exercises. And this God who sees in secret will reward you publicly. And then Jesus moves on and he talks about treasures. He wants us not to store for ourselves treasures on earth. He wants that we should store our treasures in heaven. Now the difference is that on earth, the treasures that we store on earth can be destroyed. Things can happen. That you can lose your treasures overnight. There are people who have amassed wealth for themselves, who thought they had all the security they had until something happened, whether a war, whether a, a robbery, whether a natural disaster, and these people lost everything. But God, Jesus says, store those treasures where? In heaven. Because in heaven, robbers don't have access to heaven. Natural disasters don't have access to heaven. Uh, you know, uh, and pestilences, they don't have access to heaven. So they can never, ever touch your treasure. Touch your treasure. So Jesus says we should store our treasures in heaven. Store your treasures in heaven. You know, these two do not seem... You know, when you look at fasting and then Jesus suddenly jumps to treasure, you'll be asking yourself, what can be the link between these two? The link between these two is that fasting in itself is a way of letting God know that the things of this world that God has blessed us with have not become our gods. Because one of the reasons that people cannot fast is that they are so attached to the things of the world, food and drink being one of them, to the extent that even to go for a while without these treasures, without enjoying these goodies, becomes a difficult thing. But fasting is one of that spiritual discipline that, you know, you take a decision that for this length of time, I'm going to go without food, I'm going to go without what, I'm going to go without drink, I'm going to go without watching television, I'm going to go without being on social media, for example, you know, to the point that you discipline yourself and know that even to deal with all these things, all these treasures, all these riches, all these goodies that God has blessed us with, even though I have them at my disposal, I can still desist from them once in a while to focus on my God. That's the relationship between treasures, the riches, the luxuries, the beautiful things that we have on earth, and fasting. The things are there to serve us. They are never there to become God in our lives. And so I urge you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that as we journey with God in this season of Lent, let us make it point to see how much we can still desist from the things that have become an all too important part of our day-to-day -day lives. Can we fast? Can we abstain from the treasures of this world in order to focus on God during this season of Lent? I invite you Join me. Let us move on as we journey day by day during these 40 days of Lent. As we journey, let us resolve that irrespective of the importance that the treasures of this world have in our lives, they will never take the position of God. We can do without them, but we can never do without God. Let us focus on God. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. My treasure is in heaven. 
And so my heart will be in heaven. Is your treasure also in heaven? And if yes, that is where your heart will also be. pray thank you dear god and king thank you for your word thank you for this season of lent thank you there is now another opportunity to journey with jesus christ during this season but as we begin this journey we ask you to walk with us we ask you king of glory that during this season may we come to the point where we can practice self-denial and self-abnegation may we come to that point oh dear god and king where we can understand that the treasures that you have given to us the beauties the blessings the, the numerous goodies that we have in this life that king of glory they are no good without you help us to know that the one and only thing that king of glory should Never, that we can never be able to be separated from short to the the kingdom. And so may we be able to store treasures there in heaven rather than on earth. Help us during this season of Lent, dear God and Father, to deny ourselves to practice fasting. Because if we can practice, if we can fast from such basic needs as food and drink, then Father, we would have begun the journey towards not making treasures, things that you've given us to make our lives better not making them the center of our life so much so that our hearts are on those things rather than on you as we journey with jesus christ be with us guide our steps day by day guide our steps onwards and upwards may we go higher and higher every day in the spiritual realm may we consecrate ourselves so that lord jesus beyond the grave we will be able to shout the victory together with our risen Lord. Thank you, God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this morning and always. Amen.